What's up, everybody? Hello. Another month. We've made it. You've made it, if you're listening or watching this. Another month in the internet sphere. This is the SoSo Podcast. Welcome back. Another month of catching up with Bluest. What's going on? How you been, Blue? I've been good. Um, I mean, lots of projects that I've been working on. Um, lots of challenges that I've been facing. Um, I don't know. It's just been... I mean... It's been, I guess I said this last month too, but it's just been a really good experience of just being able to, I guess, use my creative brain every day. So that's been a lot of fun. Um, of course, there's challenges in designing as well, um, especially like working with collabs and stuff, um, because you want to make sure that you represent your company well and you represent the other company well. So... There's rules that we set, there's rules that they set, and so you kind of have to make sure that everything is, you know, good and followed um, to make sure you don't um, kind of mess up on stuff. Um, so I think that's been the biggest challenge, is having to kind of find a good balance that makes sure that your company, or like Nonsense looks good, and the collab partner we're collabing with looks really good on the, the items, I guess. Um, so that's kind of been my biggest hurdle at the moment. There's been a lot of redos just because I couldn't get there. Some, there were times where I just couldn't get things right. Um, but it's been it's been fun. For four sure. months. It's been four months since you've officially mm -hmm. been kind of working it um, with them. And it's is it still new things every day or is it? I mean, to kind it's of starting like to kind of. of it yeah, and, it's starting to kind of. Um, I guess I'm starting to get used to it a little bit more. I kind of know what to expect. Yeah. But it's still, I mean, there's some curveballs here and there, but. It yeah. always is, right? Yeah. There's always is. And how much, what's, what's your, yeah. what's your relationship with, you know, the online crew, the streaming? Like it's, you've been doing it for five years. Now you're doing something new for four months trying to like. I mean, it hasn't together, really but. changed from last month in that sense. It's kind of. It's pretty, uh, unfortunately, nothing has changed because it's not like I'm streaming more or less or anything. I'm kind of spotty still. So I feel like I'm sometimes here, I'm sometimes not. I can't really. Do you miss streaming? Yeah. But that's kind of the reality of life, right? You kind of have to sacrifice some things to open new doors. So oh, yeah. I'm thinking it's just it's just something I'm going to have to deal with. For the new opportunities, which I mean, yeah, it sucks. I I definitely miss it. Um, there's times where I hear you streaming and I'm over there working, and I wish I could just hop in, but mm -hmm. that's the reality of it all, right? So, I mean, do I regret it? No, of course not. Yeah, I really like my job, can, and but you mean like just like work wise, like you have to be you're, you're focused on something else. Yeah, yeah. At the moment, yeah, so. yeah. But I meant like I'm, yeah, I I need to work, so. There's time, of course, there's times where I just hop in yeah, when I'm yeah, done. Yeah. But I'm talking about like on days where I have to focus and I have to get things done. I can't just, you know, hop in and join. So it's definitely, um, yeah, just a new thing I have to deal with. And it's not like, um, don't get me wrong. Like I said, I don't regret taking the job or anything like that. Like I'm very happy where I am. Um, I think I have a ver better relationship with... Um, streaming too so i think it's good all in all it's just it does get yeah it's a little lonely i suppose but yeah sometimes yeah. if you're working on lo alone or yeah there's definitely a lot less teamwork now when it comes to i mean when we stream together there's definitely um it's just kind of like back to the old times and mm -hmm. for better or for worse yeah. Is what I realized. And mm -hmm. I think there's the there's definitely that energy of us streaming together. Mm -hmm. But there's also the the stress that's there that was always there. A level of stress and a lot like a different stress is too negative. I would say like another part of the brain that I have to that has to run because it's with people. somebody else, yeah. Yeah, and it's not like um, a collab. 
Mm. We have to move as we're, you know, I joke around sometimes saying like I'm always collabing with Blue or Blue's collabing with me. But it's totally different because we move as one body. We move as one streamer. Mm -hmm. And it's not, we don't have separate channels. We don't. So I've realized that there's a level of, there's like a different brain that I have to also switch on. That I don't have to when, it, when it's just by myself. Mm hmm I don't have to worry about rhythm. I don't have to think yep. about yep. Um, <laughs> where the conversation is going and stuff like that. And, yep. you know, I try not to give a shit either way, but e no, no, it's, it it's still does. Definitely hard. I mean, that's that's how I felt when I was doing so many solo streams or like mm -hmm. when our roles were reversed. Yeah. I remember during my flow, like, that's why I would choose really specific games for my solo streams. Because it was like, oh, I, I don't like I literally just thought like, oh, I don't want to play this with Gray. It's going right. to be hell playing this with Gray, so I want to play by myself. Or I'll save this for a duo because this is probably something he'll enjoy too. And I would kind of deduce which one would be good for co-op, not co-op, but like, you know, duo. And then which one would be good for solo just because, yeah, when you're playing a game with somebody else, you can't do what you want to do. And that can get really frustrating, especially if you're having a bad day. That frustration piles on really fast. Yeah. So like, for example, like Dragon's Dogma even... I remember, I think, the last time we did a dual stream, there were times where and I'm, I'm thinking, oh, my God, I want to go over here. But he won't go over there. Mm. But that's just that's the, that's the nature of it all. It's been like that since day one. So anytime we play a game like Elden Ring or something, there's there are times where I'm like, I want to go this way. He wants to go this way kind of thing. Um, and so I think doing a really long game that way can take a toll on us as well. Um, so I think... The fact that you finished Dragon's Dogma by yourself was the right call, I think. Um, and also, yeah, like I said, or like you were saying, it's it's a different pacing, and it's a different way you use your brain, and it's a different way of streaming when you're with two people. 100%. So it's you, you. I feel like dual streams leave us a lot more tired than solo streams. Yeah, it depends on what we do. I think hmm. like we so we just came off streaming. It's always like horror games and just the one-off games that are that are always just like they they always just tend to feel better because mm -hmm. it's not um, you don't feel an obligation to just keep going and it's like a reset every time. But then yeah. the next problem is so what next? Yeah, what are you playing? Next? Um, which you don't have when you play a long game. So there's always mm -hmm. um, troubles and you know positives for both sides, but. Um, yeah, like we just got off playing that that driving game. Um, I think Decimate Drive, which is like such a simple idea, where you, it's a horror game where you, which I don't understand really the story of it, but um, I do have theories. Yeah, <laughs> but it pretty much the premise of like the you know the format of the game is just running around at checkpoints and a bunch of cars are coming after you and trying to run you over. Mm -hmm. And it's so simple. It's not ghosts. It's not murders. Or I mean, they're kind of murders, I guess. But they're just cars. You don't actually see anybody. And it's all, it's all just open. It's like a parking lot or like a neighborhood. And for some reason, it's just terrifying. And um, and it's actually pretty difficult, especially with Split, because you can't do like quick swerves and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it would be like me looking down. And then that would force you to stop moving. Yeah, And then when you don't move, the car goes by and then dodges us. Or like vice versa. Like you would make a quick movement and then I would stop, take my um, take my hands off my mouse and then we'll stop moving and then we'll just be lucky. So it added like a, it was pretty difficult and it was fun mm -hmm. and we were able to, it was a good length. So that's Frank had a lot of cars. What? Just saying. Frank had a lot of cars. A lot of cars, yeah. It was a lot of cars. And a, a lot of types of cars. Uh, even like um, burning police cars. Yeah, that too. So it was, but it, I I really like that. Like it was just like one shot. It was kind of like and mm -hmm. horror games tend to just do better in or just tend to do much uh, is much easier to stream, just because the dynamic of a horror game is that there's tension, and then there's fear, which is a natural reaction, and so it it's just um. It's easy to get into those kind of games. You know, there's not much lull time with those. So that's why it's always, uh, it's an exciting time. And I think there's going to be a lot of that where it's just one-shot games more going into the future rather than longer games. And then, 
You mentioned Dragon's Dogma. That was the first game I actually ever played by myself uh, on stream. Uh, with imp streams, I would play here and there, but I've never done a full playthrough of a game. Mm -hmm. And Dragon's Dogma was kind of the first one that I decided for myself at one point. When I knew, when I knew that it, the split thing wasn't going to do it, we weren't going to do the whole thing split, and I started doing a lot more streams by myself, I realized I want to, you know, try and experience... A long game. A long game, an RPG by myself, streaming it. I play a bunch, but a lot of them would just be off stream. Um, but I wanted to try it. And holy shit, I learned a lot from it. Um, I'm really proud of myself. It's ridiculous because, like, everybody's been doing it, you know? Like, most mostly people are solo streamers, and they've been doing RPGs for, like, years. But I, for me, it was, like, a first-time experience. There was so much to learn about streaming those kind of games, the mm -hmm. the different types of, and same with you too, because you've been doing it on solo for years. But you had your solo dates for years. But um, it was wow. It was just very. The, there was a lot of moments where I just had to get used to a certain type of you know rhythm of the game, um, how much I should. When 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 a game is full of side quests, and when a game is full of and the game itself is actually pretty long. You, there's always moments where I go, do I go for this side quest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do I not go for this side quest? Because you don't know what oh to expect. God, yeah. And I, th I think in re with recent years, Dragon's Dogma is kind of what I would say is uh, near like a, they're trying to go for an old school style, mm -hmm. which means that a lot of the stuff takes time to kind of immerse you into the world. Where a lot of it will be like, okay, well, safe travel is not that safe. Um, fast travel is actually not that um, convenient. You need to get certain items that you don't get too many of. You start getting them at the very end of the game, but um, the item that lets you fast travel. But um, it's just a, it, it's a, it's one of those like you t you spend a lot of time. Like I know people that spend like hours in that game, and then finally start main story and stuff like that. It's like a. I've never played Skyrim, so I don't know, but people say it's very similar to that kind of mm -hmm. world. I mean, I think a lot of RPGs tend to do that because I remember having that same feeling with like Mass Effect. I remember the first two games, I didn't do much side quests because there were so many. But then the third game actually kind of requires you to do all the side quests. So I remember doing so many side quests that there was a part of me that was like, do I really want to be doing all this? <laughs> That's a lot of side quests, but... Um, yeah, it's like, or when people would suggest, like, oh, you should do this. That was, like, the only times I would do them. But, yeah, that internal struggle of wanting whether or not you should do a side quest or not is, yeah, I totally understand. Because the thing is, like, when you play by yourself, first of all, I'm not 100% completionist in a game anyways. Mm. Um, there's, like, a certain level and limit of enjoyment that i can get from a game and be like i 100 percent enjoy this game and i love it mm -hmm. but i don't i've never got you don't need every i don't need a trophy yeah. i don't yeah. you know um i don't think you need to 100 percent a game to really get a feel for the game or anything like that like i'll do what i want i'll level till i want a level in an rpg and and, and then mm -hmm. i'll go beat it you know but I play games very differently than I do on stream. I play I play games very differently on very consciously mm. on stream than I do off stream. For so, sure, yeah. Because off stream, I have all the time in the world. Nobody's yeah. watching me. I don't have to keep talking, so I'll just grind forever. Yeah. yeah. But mm -hmm. I don't want to do that for right on yeah. stream because I it's just not it gets that, boring. Yeah. It, the grinding part's fine. I, I don't want the battles to get boring. Yeah, yeah. You know, because I feel like there's always, like, a good... And missing out on things is really kind of, like, not going perfect. Not looking mm -hmm. at a guide and going perfect is kind of... Um, that's why um, it's, it's always fun. And that's why over... You know, if, if you've been listening or watching the the so-so... That's kind of what we mean by when we talk about how streaming a game is so different from playing a game. Is that it's not even like the performative part of like actually having to talk the whole time. It's not. It's just your play style changes on purpose. Mm. Like you have to. Um, unless that's how. That's for us. There's, yeah, yeah. People have so many different mm -hmm. ways.
There's literally things called slow plays where people will just 100% of the game, and that's the vibe that mm-hmm. people in the community like, and that's what they build themselves up on, and that's how they do it, and that's like that's just their style. But for us, I think it's always been there. Um, we want to go to set. It's like, a balance. Yeah, you know, a good pace. A good pace where there's a good ending. It ends somewhere, mm-hmm. and we don't want to feel like we're like specifically that category of streamers that like only stream one game and when you play a game for too long you, you it's not like that but your mind starts to kind of get in like that mode where it's like man i've been playing this game for so long you know I, and it's just i'm just not that patient either as a watcher as a viewer of a stream i'm not that patient either so and i've always said i want to do streams that i like to watch so yeah yeah dragons and going back to dragon's dogma it's one of those ones that kind of want that's kind of pushing you to be a slow player. Yeah. It and I really enjoyed that game and I really had fun and there was one point if you were watching where I there's a quest that doesn't that requires you to remember where you picked up a certain collectible that there's literally there's 200 or something of in the game that you just pick up and it's just one of those like things like hey there's a collectible all over in this world, and for how much you get, you can trade them for items at a certain store. So you're just trying to like find them. You know, some people will go out and hunt for them. It's maybe you just find them on the road. It's random. I found a few on the road throughout my what? Like I think at that point it was like 50 hours into the game. Just like just found it. Then one of the side quests require you to rem- remember where you picked up your first one and. You have to go back to where you found it. And when that quest hit, and I hit about two or three or four places that were in my mind, and they were all wrong. It was either I've never found them, and it was like just some memory that I made up, or it was somewhere that I picked up, but it wasn't the first, so there was nothing there. Mm. Okay. Like, I was like, what do I do? Like, I just hit a wall. Like, mentally, like, do I do this do i keep going and then so i started getting out like guides on mm. stream which i've never done yeah you you don't you're not one and to do that i just had to but like i had to get up a guide on like where the medals are mm-hmm. in, in the game it's a, and it's a token that you have to find yeah, right with that and you couldn't even find it with that so i could not and it's like and then people were like why don't you just go from like the beginning and then just go for all of uh to start finding, just like take the map and just go from the beginning of the map, and, and then grab everything, and then grab everything. And because this quest is also there's a time limit to the time mm. until you can uh, complete it, and so I'm timed. It's it's a good amount of time, but and it's like people were like, why don't you just take a map, take the map and just pick them all up. It's faster. Mm. And that's like a really distinctive moment where I go, yeah, I would do that if I was playing that off, if I was playing off stream. Mm. But I don't want to do that on stream. And it's like, it's almost like, it's, I try to, okay, I, I tried really hard to not make it seem like I'm bitching and complaining about the mm-hmm. quest. Yeah. There's been like, there'd be moments where like I would look for the, the coin. And I would be like, oh, man, this isn't it. God damn, this is so hard. But that's not really like, to me, that's not really complaining. That's just like me just being like, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, no, kind mm. of on to the next. Mm-hmm. Right. And because if I start complaining and like just bitching and moaning the whole time, then it's like then just use it if it's giving you a hard time. Yeah. But if it's just me trying and trying and trying and trying and trying, like, then it's not a negative experience. Mm. And there there was a moment where I was just like, okay, this is a test. Like, this is a test for me to see how, how far I can take it because I really don't know. And, like, really pick out some places and, yeah. like, just go. And at the end, I couldn't do it. I think I did it for, like, three streams and, like, did did a total. Did of a like, lot of imps, too. Yeah, like, I think it was, like, 10 hours or, like, more 10 plus hours of just trying to find yeah, the token. <laughs> And it was like, in my mind, it's, 
as a streamer, mm -hmm. you have to think like, well, nobody, people don't want to watch this. And then yeah. there's a part of me that's like, well, but I don't want to give up there. So mm -hmm. then it's, I want to make it so this is one of like, that it's still interesting to watch this. And I don't think I succeed. It was I succeeded a hundred percent, and it, I think it's a learning thing where it's like. And then I gave up, and I said, you know what? I can't because I'm gonna start. I felt myself starting to dislike the game. Ah. Not because the game was making me do this. Was because it was the fact that I couldn't find it, the frustration that I couldn't find it, and I just didn't know where to go anymore at this point. Um, the fact that uh, story wasn't progressing, obviously. I couldn't, and the fact that I felt like I wasn't being entertaining anymore, uh, as you know, like why am I, what, why am I, um, doing this online, do this shit offline, type thing, and I just couldn't. The only thing that was really helping was like people talking in the chat, mm. that was like there, and it was once you start relying on that, it's over for me. Once you start relying on that, and you start relying on like what people say and. There's a lot of that, of course. Like it's like a teamwork thing, and it's like you. I think w with good when people start chatting, it really like pumps you up and makes you going. But once I start, and this is for me personally, once I start relying and stop believing in myself and just rely on that a hundred percent on people there, I'm not gonna feel good about the stream. Yeah, I just know that. That's just from past experience. Um, and so I started to feel that. And I was like, what am I doing? And then I looked over because I I have the main game on the screen. And then I looked over to the OBS screen that has the stream up. And I saw myself for like, a, I normally don't look at it. I just mm. ignore it because there's nothing, because the chat's over here. and the, Or the game's like over here. Or it's like, I don't need to look at the OBS screen. But I saw myself in that, on my monitor. And I just... I don't know. Like that's not that's not what I wanted to look like, or like that's not. Of course, it's you don't really know if you're just watching the stream, but I'm that person, and I'm seeing myself there, and I'm like, no, I wouldn't want to watch that guy. So then I, as soon as I saw that, I came back here and I said, guys, I have two more places that I'm gonna look for. If I can't find it, I'm going on. And then I, and I went on to finish the game. Mm -hmm. But my God, man, like that was like rough. Because if it was you and me, you, we would have we probably ditched that quest so fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. We would have been like, yeah, okay, yeah. that's that was we cool. We would have tried a few places and then just moved on. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's... I didn't feel lonely playing a very long RPG game by myself, but it felt very different. And I was, like, really stoked that I was able to hit that final credits, ending credits of that game. Um, hmm. because I kind of did it on my terms. Everything mm -hmm. was on my terms. Everything was um, how I wanted to do it. There's so many things that I could have done better, but I wouldn't have even known that if I didn't stream it by myself. So it's like, then on to the next. Like then, mm -hmm. And because it's like, it's a fresh experience, but not fresh because we've been technically doing it for five years. It's like, I'm not, I don't like skip over the things that people might take for granted. Yeah. Because they've just been doing it for so long. Like there's a callus over that. Like I don't have any callus, but at the same time, I've experienced it all so many times. So I can tell the difference, but everything is fresh to me. So that was really cool. That was like a really, really cool experience. And I definitely want to do that again. But it's like, I, that was one experience. And then I want to try a different game. And I've done, and recently, I've, um, recently I've done a, uh, our first, this is another weird thing, but I did my first collab. You did, yeah. Um, and that was How'd that go? It was really fun. It was really. So I mean, I was watching a little bit on the side and it looked like you guys were having a fucking blast, so. Yeah. So I've, I've been, like. We've done things before with people, mm. but that was the first time that it was just me. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't like an event also. Mm. It was like, because we did like Power World with other people, but mm -hmm. it was both of us going into someone's server yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. But, and that was just once. Um, 
that was the first time that I've done something on my own with somebody without you. And then you're growing up. It was no leaving it was, the house. And then I think <laughs> that was really cool. Yeah. And I, I think I have a lot of things that was going through my head before that happened. And we talked. I've only met him twice in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, in real life, I've only met Josh twice, and um, I just knew that there was there was something that like it was just me. That guy was just very interested in him, and um, I asked him. I was like, "Hey, would you you want to just like you seem like somebody seem cool? Yeah, like you want to do stuff?" And he was like, "Yeah, okay." And usually, it's uh, it's usually like that for with people. Like people are so yeah. down to do it, but. Um, I mean, I think the only time I did something just by myself was Monster Hunter with oh, Pete yeah, and Lena. Yeah. So that was a while ago. So it's just, it's a different vibe. Um, mm-hmm. Everyone everyone was just really nice a- about it. And um, yeah, there's a lot that's like, that's that I'm, that I want to do, but I, it just doesn't seem fair to say it here if it doesn't happen. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. So like, I won't talk about too much of that, but uh, you have something planned, right? So yeah, and it's not something big. That's the whole no, thing. Yeah, yeah, that's like, the it's, point. It's not like one big event. Yeah. I think that's what messes I mean, us up. Yeah, that's what kept. That's why a lot of our big events have just like fizzled out. Like Werewolf didn't really continue because it's like the bigger the event, the more pressure it is on us, and also a lot more planning. So, yeah, I was saying it's probably better if you guys do, like, small things, small collabs where it's like, hey, you want to play today? It's like, yeah, sure. And then you play. Yeah. Like, it's not something, you know, like this grandiose thing where you plan it, you make little graphics for it, you announce a couple days before. Like, no, I think just the more casual it is, the longer collabs will continue. Yeah. So. And it's like, the thing is, is the big events Mm. have to be like that. And I think... Every, yeah. And people that can just keep popping that out and doing them by themselves um, is like, okay, well, that's that's a whole, that's a, another level of like, that's a different type of person from me because I can't keep doing that because mm-hmm. to avoid that with Werewolf, what we did was, because we knew that was going to happen, mm-hmm. we said, let's just start planning the next one after we confirm the one that we're working on right now. Mm-hmm. That way, by the time Werewolf 1 ends, we're already like 60% through ready, yeah. the second one. And then we did that for a couple months. And then, but it, the problem with that one was that it just required so many people every time. Yeah. And we wanted to like so. switch it up, which then, we actually couldn't at the end of like four or five. Yeah. And so it mm-hmm. was like. And then, I mean, recently we tried to plan one, but with so many people asking so many people, just schedule just never lined up. And time so zones we ended up, and yeah, time zones and everything. So we just had to just, not we couldn't do it. Yeah, and like, it we had was, to say sorry. And so. it was up to us to just keep asking, and mm. um, but we just didn't have that in us. Yeah, and it's like we just we just felt yeah. bad that we were like taking everyone's time, and like we asked people to like, can you open up this day or can mm-hmm. you have this day open? And like, okay, and then like it just didn't work. Yeah, and then so be like, oh, that. sorry, they can't come this way this day. What about this day? What about this day? What about this day? You know. So. Yeah. So yeah. with so the whole thing is like there's a really fine line. I think with that kind of collab, like the casual collabs, because I don't want it to just be. It it can't. I don't want it to just be, nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, there's something special there. There's something special about doing something with somebody, especially for us, especially for me, because we don't do stuff like that often. So, and it's like my time to. I think I sh- I t- I said it before, but. It's about fucking time that I show that bluest shows that like we want to grow, and yeah. in, in an outward <laughs> way, you know, yeah. like we're. It's about fucking time, like that we. Now that we're in this situation of, um, with your work and whatnot, and I'm, I'm taking, I'm, I'm doing a lot more solo stuff, and it's, it's time that I felt like. I think it was like, you know, February or March. I was like, you know, I got to stop being like, people think that we're okay with where we are. Mm. And it's our fault. People yeah. think like we're okay at our size. Like we're like content mm. and we're like comfortable here. Mm. When we're not at all. We want to grow. We want to keep going. And there's things that we do, but 
it's not enough of like a fighting pose to like to be able to show to even our community. Yeah. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, what what are we doing? Like, we can't even. We're not even showing that we want to grow with to our community. How the hell is anybody else gonna catch on? Yeah. That's not that's not fair. No, we haven't been doing anything to grow. Yeah. And it's if like, someone blatantly asks you, like, okay, so what have you guys been doing to grow? Yeah, it's nothing. Really nothing. We haven't been doing anything. Yeah, there's so. like, there's things that we work on on like how to stream. Yeah. Or like it, what I, we think is creates a good stream. Very internal, minute, subtle stuff that's just kind of nobody's gonna find out except for us. So we're ready. Mm-hmm. We've been getting ready, and then it's like now it's time for me to at least. Start by showing our community that, that it's serious. not fair to the community if all of a sudden you just see me being like, man, why are we growing? Which I which I never do, but like I, I'm like I'm never like, oh man, like man, why aren't we, we growing, yeah. guys? And I know I've never said that because yeah, no. I just that's just the last thing that I will ever say. Yeah, because it's always I think it's always our fault. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Because and I'm also aware that we haven't been showing that pose to people. So like from yeah. this year, I really want to do that. I really want to at least start by showing. If we're not good at showing it to a bunch of people, at least show it to the community that hey, we're we want to get big and um, this is what I want to do for a living. And it's always been that. I've always wanted to do streaming and content creation and not content creation. Yeah, streaming in specifically. As a living. And people from the get-go were like, that's dumb. Or like, that's crazy. And um, and it's still, people do still say that. But I still think that I can. I think that we can. And now that you are off doing other things, I have to be like, well, then I got to be able to steer the shit by myself. Hmm. Um, to a certain extent. To a certain extent. I, I definitely want to do stuff. We, we, we're definitely going to do like I think stuff it's, together. But. It's more, but the thing is, at this point, with the fact that I'm not here as much anymore, I think the importance or the big question is how much you can, like, you can, um, uh, what's the word for it? Like, you can think, bl- mm? how much you see yourself in bluest, I think, is yeah. the big question. Like, I think at this point, because of the yeah, amount of streams that I'm in, you have to be like, okay, Bluest is 90% me. Like inside my head. Right? Yeah, inside yeah. your head. In my yed. Or, yeah, in your, yeah, okay. <clears throat> yeah. So you have to, I think it depends on how much ownership you can take of Bluest. Yeah. And there's going to be times where you do have to put me, like, off to the side. Mm-hmm. Like, there's going to be times... Where you're going to be like, okay, sorry, Blue, but you can't, like, I have to do this by myself. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't be there. Like, not because I, it's not like I can't, it's more like it's better if I'm not. Or there's going to be times where, yeah, it's better if it's just Grey. Or it's better if I'm the side character. Or it's better if, like, there, I mean, I'm hoping that there's going to be times in the future where you're doing so well with all the collabs and stuff that you f- actually come up to me and say, like, sorry, you can't stream today. Right, right. Is the future the that future, we want in to the go future. for. That's a future so. that's... Uh, that one, when you say that, is... I can't fathom that, but I do but know what you mean. I really I think, do know yeah. what you mean. Realistically, yeah. that's how it's going to have to be because at the end of the day, the more you think, oh, blue is blue and me, it's blue and I or whatever, the more you don't take responsibility for the stream. Like, you're still depending on blue. Or what blue represents. Yeah. So at the in your head, I have in your head you have to think about the fact that I'm not like even though I am here, I think there's gonna be a time where you're gonna have to start thinking I'm not there like hundred mm. percent. And blue is yours now. Right. It's kind of have I think how you're going to have to tackle situations. Yeah, that's definitely in the future of yeah. like, and I think doing this. Uh, this first collab is actually a huge step for me because um, I really need to go take a shit right now. So can we like either pause it or can you stall for like twenty two minutes? I, I really go I, then. Just go. I know. I'm, I'll go. be back in a sec. I'll be back in okay, a sec. Okay, I will cut this part anyway. You can say a joke. No, I'll cut it. Sorry. All right. He's back. 
in Hello. the bathroom. Did you cut it? Mm, yes. Okay. I hope so. Anyways, I don't know if you did. Anyways, I'll leave that because you edit all this. So this is up to you. You can edit it if you want. No, you can do that. Um. <laughs> anyways, I think, uh, sorry, to get back to the point, um, it's a big, uh, I had this like, can I be like honest? Like, there was a night where before all this like my the first uh, Terraria stream with Josh happened, like maybe like like maybe like almost like a month ago, where I couldn't sleep at night and I was like freaking out, and I was just like, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I had this moment where I was like, what do I do? Like how how do we how do I grow the channel from here? You know, the channel's obviously, you know, it's it's actually the same with both solo streams. It's like when we solo stream, we just don't do as well when it becomes the, the statistics wise. Mm. And um, that's just normal because we're, we complete the set here. But yeah. um, and we're always just better together. But, you know, I was we were getting kind of in this transitionary period I talked about in the p- podcast. It hit a point where like I couldn't take it anymore. You know, and I think you probably saw me pretty fucked you know i didn't run to like i wasn't like drunk all the time or anything like that but like i was getting to a point where i was like i really need help i need to, i need a i went out to like drink with friends but not to get drunk but like to really get different kinds of perspective from people of like not streamers but like other friends that i haven't seen in a while to like refresh really just trying to figure out stuff and i couldn't couldn't really find what to do and then it was like at 2 i think it was like 2 a.m. Um, I was like, for some reason, I was like, I'm fucking done with this. Like, I'm fucking done with, like, not figure. Like, I know the answer. Or at least there's a couple of answers that I just don't do. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know why I don't do them. And I can do them in a way that should be comfortable. I'm creative enough to figure out a way that is comfortable for me. Yeah. So why the fuck am I not doing it? I'm so sick of this. I'm so sick of me not doing this shit. And I was like, 2 a.m. I've only met Josh once at this point. <laughs> 2 a.m. Messaged him. So like I had to like search him on Discord because I hadn't talked to him in ages. And I was like, hey, let's go out for a drink. And he's like, yeah, yeah let's go. <laughs> he was like awake. He's like, yeah, let's go next week. And then super chill. Super cool about it. And then we went to go for a drink the next week. And then we just we just did our first thing. And hopefully wait m- many more in the future. But, like, I'm just, like, yes. I'm not going to be, like, doing crazy shit on TikTok or, like, you know. Or you're not. Throwing, like, yeah, I don't know. Cause you're not going to sign popsicle sticks? Damn. That That's a future that I might. Okay. That's a, that's a future. Or I might go to the Baymax ride in Disneyland and dance. Get some clout there. I that mean, way. honestly. But um, you know, there's there's a there's a I want to prove that there's a there's a way that people like me that aren't really into social media can still make a community, and we still like I, I think at to a certain point we've already proven that. To, like we there is a very strong community that we have, but like there's we can go more. We can go more. There's definitely this next step, and um. I think it's like I'm starting to figure it out or like I see it in my head and it takes time to like realize all that. But in my head, I'm starting to like just say like, fuck it, you know, like just fuck it. Let's go for it. Let's do it in a way that makes it comfortable. There's a way to do it. And Josh has just been like so understanding or like he's been down. He's been asking to do cooking streams Mm -hmm. multiple times. Yeah. And we, we were just like, and he was supposed to be on Werewolf too. Yeah. Like we were going to invite him for Werewolf and stuff, but it just never panned out. And it's all of our, it's all, it's our fault, okay. our fault. Like we didn't like fall through with, you know, everything just kind of like, we didn't go through with any of that. It just kind of like, we didn't really do collabs. And one of the reasons why is because when you stream with two people, it's like a collab all the time in the sense that it's hard to, for people to ask us to do stuff maybe. And people are like, they're always busy because they're all, they're, you know, they're engaged. They have their own thing going and all that stuff. And plus, they stream all the time and together. And 
it just seems like this is already a complete set, so there's no yeah. room for anything else, and I think it's hard for people to approach. Um, and also, we don't reach out, too. That's our problem. We don't reach out. So I was just like, fuck it. And then that's why... And Josh just Josh was like, "Yep, let's go." I was like, "What?" And he's he's done collabs, many collabs like that, so he's like used to it. Mm. I I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Like I, I spent the, I was like, "Wait, there's an overlay that shows other people's faces when they're on Discord." Not to like Google that and like put that in before the before we did the the Terraria stream and stuff like that. And so it just made me realize like I'm such a noob when it comes to stuff like this, but. Yeah, I I do. I owe it to the community. I owe it to myself. I owe it to Blues. I owe it to you. I owe it to the dogs, the biggest clout goblins. Um, <laughs> that we want. We need to show that we want to grow. We need to be more open about the fact that we want to grow. And I hope, and like, Roy's been helping us out. Do, helping us out with that he's part he's part of bluest at this point like in the point of like he's to me he's kind of like you know one two three four the fifth bluest <laughs> he's the fifth bluest in that sense where he's um really trying to help us and we have to do it on our on, on our end too from a streaming point and now that and it's needed more than ever because you're not here mm-hmm and I need to do it, and I, and I need to just. Sh- I always say like I need to show a fighting pose, a little bit more, because I think a lot of people, and I don't know why it didn't hit me. I'm just really dumb, I guess. But I just realized I think a lot of people think that we're like okay with where we are. Yeah. Like people are like, oh yeah, Blue's got Blue's got a new job. This is a whole side gig, completely now, and they're this is just like for fun. And it's like, no, like I'm, I'm seriously so hungry to get bigger and grow the channel, grow the community, make it strong and make this my main income. Mm. And another thing is that we switched everything over to my account. Everything was in Blue's account. Every income that comes from internet stuff is now in my, comes to my account now. So I can actually... I I wasn't seeing any money in my bank account for five years. Now I see it more than ever. And so, and and that was Blue's idea. was like, I think you need to do that so you can actually see how much you're making. And that actually just changes it a lot and puts a lot of it into perspective than just a number on an email that says, blah, 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 paid this much. Yeah. So, yeah, I really want to do that. And and it's not like, but it's everything's. I just want to make it very clear that it's always going to be on my terms, what I think makes sense. So it's not like I'm going to do something that's completely out of my comfort zone to the point of it doesn't match bluest, what I perceive as bluest, what I think bluest is. So it'll always be what what's very, if people think there's something special about bluest, it'll always be that. And I just want to make that very clear. That everything will still be in line. I'm not gonna do anything crazy. It's not like I'm not gonna be doing something that is out of the ordinary. I think it's gonna be more of things that people are like, yeah, why didn't you guys do that before? Kind of stuff. Yeah, sorry guys, no bathtub streams from Gray. That I don't no, I didn't say that. I wanna <laughs> do a lot of them. <laughs> but yeah, um I just wanna make that clear. And I've been talking well, I always talk like ninety percent of the time. I keep, I always take over. The conversation, so I always feel bad. But um, questions? <laughs> anything? Yeah. And anything to answer that? No. D- did I? Okay. Here, how about this? I'll do something that I always do off, off pod, co- off the pod, on pod. Was there anything that I just said? Because I'm just spewing stuff off my uh-huh. head, right? That's mm-hmm. that's in my mind. It's really unorganized. Mm-hmm. Did I miss something? Did no. I misspeak? Did I did I say something that might have come off the wrong way? That's like that needs to be no. reiterated. I think a you're more? fine. You you're you're like the god of reiteration. You say the same thing like five hundred times. Yeah. So you're fine. So everything is good. Yes, everyone knows that you're hungry. <laughs> okay. Shall we go? No, no. But, Move on. Okay. Speaking of community, um, we have big news <laughs> with the community. Is that 
we, and I wanted to make it, I wanted to mention it on this podcast, is that Twitch is starting from May 1st, which it already is over here, past that, uh, a new partnership program, or a, an addition to the partnership program. There's two levels. It's called the Partner Plus program. And simply put, the higher level you are, you get more cut. You get more cut of the. So level one is seventy percent, right? Se- no, no, no. Level one is sixty. Sorry, sixty percent, and then level two is seventy percent. We normally get fifty fifty. Yeah, and we've so. always been getting fifty fifty, and then now it's we're getting ten percent more. Yeah, so. which is huge. Yeah, and it's actually a really hard milestone mm-hmm. to get through because it uh, you can't do get it. Gifted subs don't, don't count. Don't count. Prime gift. Prime doesn't count. Only tier one Only subs. Only tier one. Tier one, two, and three subs. Two, three, yeah. So it has to be just like singular subs that people sub for themselves. And Use for themselves. Yeah. And honestly, it's crazy that we can. And yes, the next milestone is level two, and I'm ready to like keep. And that would mean that we just need to grow the community. Mm-hmm. But. As of now, with the community that we have, to even hit level, hit level one, one is, is fucking hard. I There's know people bigger than us who can't get level one. So because, and I didn't really want to push it too much because that I didn't want people to think that they couldn't gift subs. I didn't want people to mm. think that they didn't they shouldn't use their prime on us and they felt bad. Or I didn't want to like because we appreciate all of that, and I've said mm-hmm. that on stream many times. But we did it, so we got to level one, and like pretty, you know. And it's uh, I was pretty surprised. I've been, I didn't look at that. I didn't look at the thing on our about page of like it doesn't of like how how much we are in the partner plus thing. But thank you guys so much. It lasts for a year now. Mm-hmm. So it lasts for oh. a year. So this year, um, hopefully we can. We're good to go. Well, I want to. That's kind of like the. Uh, it motivates us to keep growing even more. Yeah. Kind of hitting not the starting line. But like, it, it kind of like got me running. It gets you running, and I hopefully by the next year, next goal would be to level hit two, level two. Yeah. So, mm. um, a big motivator, uh, for us, and it's all thanks to everybody that subbed, um, whether they were conscious of the Partner Plus program or not. Just thank you so much for supporting the channel. Um, the reality is, and I don't want to say this, the reality is, if there is a point where we cannot support a certain amount with the 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 subscriptions with the subscriptions i would have to find another job or like i that that's just the reality right like this isn't you know we're we're adults and we've always kind of been in a situation where like i can i can like medium it out i can i can like level it out with the other jobs that i have right now but there is a point where without this support my that my life somewhat of my life depends on this um on the the monetary, you know, the the financial stuff, and I think it's very obvious. So that's why I don't mention it. It's not, and when you say it, it adds weird weight on it. But it means, and that's why I want to say it. I only want to mention it when it's a positive light. And I just want to say thank you so much. It yeah, really, unfortunately, it really I don't helps. make that much to the point where I can be your sugar mom, <laughs> mom, or whatever. So I don't make that much, you know. Thank you. I make enough, Thank but like I don't make. You, you, you've helped me yeah. out in some pretty, I, I pretty fucking rough spots, so I, I I appreciate you. I can't, you know, come in here being like, oh, do you do you want do you want a new Louis Vuitton jacket and just buy for you? Like yes. I can't do that. Yeah, the thing that so. I always say every Tuesday. Yeah, is, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. Where's Where's my Supreme yeah. shirt? Yeah. For this month, no. But oh. again, thank you guys. Thank you guys so much, and we'll keep getting better and growing, and I hope you guys come with us. On that too. So mm. just want to say thank you very much. This. This. All right. So we got some questions for the month of uh, for the SoSo podcast. First one's by regular, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of presentation, not the game itself. What's your favorite game trailer? I never really thought about that. Yeah, game trailer. Favorite game trailers. I yeah I don't think I've ever thought about that. Yeah, I don't really. I mean, we watch a bunch of trailers on stream, but there's like games that I remember, but I end up just playing the game, and I remember yeah. the game more than the trailer. So I don't presentation call. Um, what are some trailers that we've seen? Um, there's that. Mm, 
I mean, like, I was always interested in, we, we haven't played it yet, but, like, Rise of the Ronin oh, yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. Every single time I saw that, I was really interested. It's really interesting in the cinematic trailer for that one game that turned out to be, like, a strategy game or something like that. Or, like, it was, like, a tower defense game. I think it was a new Capcom game. I keep forgetting the name of it, but it be, we, I thought it was an action RPG, but it turned out to be, like, a tower defense game. So that was kind of, like, different. Still interested, but, um, yeah, I remember Rise of the Ronin was always kind of, like, I'm always into those kind of, like, old-school Japan-type stuff. I mean, Monster Hunter Wild is just because I like Monster Hunter, but I don't think it's because of, like, the cinematic presentation or anything. It's, I think it's just because it's Monster Hunter. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. I don't think I, I, I can't really think of one. I same goes for like Elden Ring. It's like it's super hype because we know what it is, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it's particularly because of the presentation. Yeah, I think it's so. definitely because we know it's Elden Ring. Mm. Yeah, I don't really watch trailers like that. I guess yeah. I don't see it through. I'm like that kind of like a almost. I don't. I don't watch trailers like I do like a movie trailer. Yeah, I don't even watch movies. So yeah, um, but yeah. Hopefully that answered it. Vaughn, uh, thank you so much, regular. Vaughn, Blue, did your birthday visit to the Mohan count as a cafe? Asking for a friend. Wait, what? Mohan cafe count as a date? I would say so. A birthday date. Yeah. I would 100% so. say so. Who planned the birthday visit? It was Blue. <laughs> I reserved it. Blue had the idea. Yeah. So, there it is. That was by Mai. Uh, Jeremy asks, for Blue, what's the most difficult part for you when designing clothes? Mm. Um, the most difficult part is to separate myself from the design sometimes because <laughs> I have to design things that I have to design things that other people will like not necessarily what I will like and I think that's the hardest part do you think about like the demographic and stuff, or is it yeah. more okay? Yeah, because you guys have all the info on that, obviously. Yeah, because I mean, there's definitely stuff that I've designed in the past that I would never wear just because it just doesn't fit my style. But it's not a kimono, so. yeah. <laughs> so it's a t shirt, how dare you? So you know, but I just ha I do have to think about like, oh, what's trending right now? What would people like? What would be cool? What would people want to wear? Yeah. Makes sense. It's kind of, uh, you're not working for yourself. Yeah. It's not my brand. Yeah. So I have to make sure that it fits the brand and who's buying it and et cetera. Not necessarily what I like. So. And for Gray, why do you hate lurkers? I don't. I love lurkers. I'm a lurker myself. How's the progress on your solo project? I mean, I did talk about it a little bit before, but now um, things have definitely changed where I'm just shifting towards streaming as kind of taking more part in it. Not 100% a solo project, but really trying to take... And that was really this whole entire podcast about that. This episode talking about my feelings towards that and where I want to take it. But um, my biggest solo project... not I wouldn't say solo. Uh, Semi-solo project now, more than ever, more than before, would be to grow the channel. And... Um, Killing it, man. It's my goal. <laughs> Thank you for that question. Regular asks, so far, what's the funniest game you've played on or off stream? Hand Simulator was oh one funny-ass game um, for a very specific uh, stage. The cow I, milking? It killed me, dude. Yeah. That shit Angry killed dog. me. So... Yeah. Uh, um that was pretty that was pretty funny. But funny game. I don't we've only I think we only play funny games on stream. I mean, I don't do humor, so But there's funny know. games, right? I mean, like when I played like Love Making Lovers, that was funny, but like in like a different way. Um I, I, it was more of like how crazy it was. I just couldn't stop like it was like ridiculous at the end of where I was. Um so I thought that was pretty funny. But I think, yeah, funny game. I've never played. I'm. There's games with good humor in it, but I'm never like laughing my ass off. I'm like, damn, that was a good joke or something like that. But mm. it, I'm never 
I think I'm always in terms of games and streaming. It's always the most ridiculous moments or like the the car game that we played yesterday was like so scary that it was funny. Like it was so, ri- it's so ridiculous, ridiculous. Yeah. like how but it's terrifying and like funny at the same time. So here it is. So that's my that's my take. Uh, so thanks so much for that question. Andres asks for blue I was watching Grace struggle with this dates and love is all around. I actually haven't seen that stream. It's a killer I stream. You should watch it. I don't think I want to see it. It's kind of weird. Is it weird for you to wa- watch me play or be like when when I'm playing a dating game? Because I've played two so far. But like, is it weird for you? Actually, no, not really. I think people want to know because we're a couple. Mm. Some people, there's different rules in relationships. No, like, I think you should play more. <laughs> I think it's funny. But uh, it's entertaining. Watching. But you don't watch them. I mean, I watched the the which, which one's Love Making is All Lovers. Around? Love is All Around is the one I played recently. The With real, like the, the live, real girl, yeah, live action. That one, one I've seen a little bit because I wa- oh, I was okay. watching while you were streaming a little bit. Yeah, because you were like right there. Um, yeah. So that one, the other one was a little too sexual. Mm-hmm. That one was a little too uncomfortable. But Love is All Around was actually pretty cute. I I still like the mom. I like the single mom. She was hot. I would have gone for her. I don't know why Gray yeah. didn't. I'm, I was really disappointed. But. If she was in the beginning of the game, I think I would have gone for no, her. No, even if she's not in the beginning, I don't know why you didn't drop the other girl and gone for the well, single mom. Well, you know why what? wouldn't you? My girl buried me in the ground. So. Yeah, so why didn't you switch? I don't understand. <laughs> Bad choice, but you know. So, I mean, I had like zero Riz. Mm-hmm. Was that pretty accurate to... I mean, that's, that's the thing is Gray says he's a romantic, but he's really not. Next question. Vaughn asks, how do you feel about the whole <laughs> dick pic thing? What are your thoughts behind it and how do you deal with it? I mean, okay, the, the reality of being a girl is at one point you get dick pics. Like, no matter what job you do. Um, no matter what job you do? Yeah, because you end up getting them in college or maybe it's like through work or clients or whatever like you i mean there was a case where they had a there was a case where you would be on the train and guys would dick oh pick yeah they air, would, air like they would airdrop you know. dick pics so it's my point is if you're a girl on the internet if you look like a girl on instagram or twitter or whatever if you're feminine you will get dick pics like from random people that's just something you end up getting um at one point in your life. That's like a normal thing, unfortunately. So my point is, it's nothing really that new. I've gotten them before. So getting it on Discord is like, oh, fuck, another one. Does kind it, of thing. Does it so. actually affect you? No, it's more, t- it's like getting junk mail. Yeah, it's like getting, it's mail, like, yeah, it's yeah. like getting spam. It's yeah. like getting, because it's like going to the, it's like going to your mailbox Thinking you're the one, like the thing you ordered is there, and you're really excited, and you, you go in there, and it's just like ads. Yeah. That's the level of excitement that I get from getting those. It's just ads, and the first thing I think is, oh great, trash. Right, right, right. Like there's okay, great. I have to take all these, put it in the trash, and I have to deal with recycling. Like it's like that mendok sinus of getting this trash in the mail, and you having to deal with it is the most frustrating part not necessarily the pictures or the people Mm. it's like okay i have to go and delete this guy and ban him and report him and blah 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 Mm -hmm. is kind of yeah the most frustrating part about it i think uh saying that it's like similar to junk mails that hit me i was like yeah it's just like noise it's it's spam right yeah it's just junk mail it's the same thing it's like getting like, hey, local singles in your area kind of mail. It's the same thing. Like that pop up that shows up when you're on sites and stuff. It's like it's just like, oh my god, I have to click out of this again, kind of thing. It's the same thing. But the thing is, it's targeted. It's a, it's a single person targeting you with it specifically. Yeah. So, it, but it doesn't make you feel like popular or anything, right? Just, no. So it's just trash. It's just right? another yeah dick. It's another wrinkly dick. <laughs> One day I want to, I want to like, one day I want to censor everything out and then have a dick tier, dick tier list of yeah, all the dick no. pics you got. And then I want to throw my dick in there. Okay. Like all censored out. And I want to see if you can tell. Okay. <laughs> That's, you can live out your fantasy in a different time. 
<laughs> okay. That's weird. Okay. That, that is weird. That's really weird. I'm scared if you don't pick mine. Okay. So, anyways, thank you so much for that question. <laughs> Zenon, I'll pick the one that's like the size of someone's leg. No, okay. Yeah. Xenon asks, so so a horse penis. Yeah. Xenon asks, question for Gray: What? Why did you stray from Shao Path and Love Is All Around? Um, that's a good question. I really like Shao. I feel like I made a big mistake with going uh with Jen, um, with how it ended. Um, and I'm still thinking about this the the shaka, this the, this riddle to this day. Um, there's that game is actually really well done. Like it made you kind of like feel bad for the people that you were turning down and stuff like that. Um, and I, that's one of those games. I don't know if I'll revisit it on stream, but it definitely made me feel like I'm pretty sure people would have and people pick different girls too. They were all they all had that trope, right? Everybody, but it was like a nice blend of them. So, um, Shao was definitely. I feel like Shao would have been like super good ending, feels good anime ending. So, I don't know. Maybe she might be getting a redemption arc. I still think about her someday, more than Jen actually. Don't tell Jen that. Which one's so? It's the one. It's like the girl that's like the like almost like girl next door. Oh, you start. Know, yeah, she's yeah. the girl that you first start living yeah, with yeah. as like a roommate, and she's just fucking sweet, and she's just like. She's no, like, single mom's better. What's her name? Uh, I forgot. What's her name, guys? Tell me. This isn't live, so. They, <laughs> um, but yeah, so. She was cute. I still think about her. Thank mm -hmm. you for that question. I can tell that you you are you are a uh, a Shao stan, and I and I back that. As it asks, Blue, how do you feel that Gray got... I feel like everybody's asking these questions well, right after that stream. stream but yeah. How do you feel that Gray got zero Riz? Please don't leave him, Blue. He might die alone if you break up with him. I mean, I've I've come to terms with it. That's not ma That doesn't make it sound any better. You're supposed to be like, you know, actually, he has a lot <sighs> yeah, of Riz. I, I, I mean, he doesn't even give me forehead up. kisses, okay? Why it's like forehead it's like, kisses? For what? Isn't that like like for what? <laughs> what? Right. No, like just you don't. Yeah, huh? just signs of affection. Wouldn't it be fucking weird if I just went up to you and be like, "Hey," and then no, you don't you, have to say anything. You just have to come up to me, give me a forehead kiss, and then go do your own thing. That's it. Wait, why? That's called signs of affection. See, he doesn't even <laughs> understand that. It's like living with a fucking roommate. Are we even dating? I don't know. He doesn't. Wait, he doesn't show me. Go like, he doesn't show me any signs of affection. People, When's the last time you gave me a kiss or a hug or anything? People, Never. Exactly. People go up to their significant others, kiss them on the forehead, and fucking bounce. What the fuck? Like, yeah. For no reason. Just yeah. be, just because. Just like I'm thinking about you, kind of thing. Or it's like, oh, what do you mean I'm thinking about? You're literally five centimeters away from me. I can't. You're yeah, you're in no, my fucking called, eyesight. Yeah, it's called signs of affection. Sometimes you see them, they look cute, so you go up there and chit and then go. Oh, wait, when have you done that to me? No, I want it done to me. The, well, well, because yeah. you never said you want. You don't. Uh, you've never expressed that you wanted signs of affection. Uh, blue. What? You don't even show emotion. How the fuck am I supposed to tell? Like, I feel like if I went up that, you would just slap me in the face. No. You'd be like, Pfft, like see, that's what I'm face. saying. If I would be more accepting of stuff like no, that. No, because I told I've told before that my love language is signs of affection, and you've never shown me signs of affection. So I don't know. It's hard when you're like just staring daggers at me all day. So no, it's just see, I, I don't see. Yeah. He's got no. Yeah, it's like living <laughs> with a fucking roommate. <laughs> We're room. not even dating. Okay. Thank you for that question, and thank you one, once again. There's always one question that makes it, you know, one mm -hmm. step further for that ring to come off your finger. Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> every time. Anyways, yeah. thank you so much. Hey, Panda <laughs> asks, do you ever feel forced or obliged to stream even if you don't feel like it specifically with an audience that expects you to, and how do you deal with that? I think we had a lot of that when it was, uh, when it's always like a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. And I think Blue had more of that with solo streams. Yeah. That's something we would talk about a lot where it was, did, you didn't know what to do. You didn't. Yeah. Um, I don't have that too much with my solo streams because um, I straight up just cancel it if I don't feel like it or, which I haven't. I actually haven't because I always wanted to stream. Like I would push it back because I like sleep in. But um, 
I've never really had that. It, there were times even like when we do when we stream together. That's something that just never happens now because of like our streaming, our duo streams are just kind of not all the time anymore. So I think the point is is that if I mean it's all based on I think personality as well. Like I think I still firmly believe that Gray is a he with his personality type he's a lot more social in terms of like no, i'm not saying he goes out and you know like likes to meet strangers and th things like that but no but like he's really he thrives in talking he likes talking and he likes you know like i mean he really likes streaming as well so versus me that i like streaming but Talking isn't really my strong point. So there's times where I just wake up and I don't really want to talk. And that's just something I struggled with, but that's not something Gray struggles with. Um, so it's just difference in our, I think, personality and what is our strength and what is not our strength kind of thing. Because like some for me, I think I my. What's the word? Yeah, I don't know what I was trying to say, but point is i think it just depends on how comfortable you you are um with yeah i guess like canceling when you need to or um dealing with like how you deal with those situations when it does come up and i wasn't really good at handling those but gray's a lot better at it <laughs> so i i i i think everything you said is correct in the yeah. sense for about me but like how mm -hmm. i strive in like talking and mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Even though I'm not like, you're not a big fan of like social. Like I don't I mean, like big groups. And no, stuff because like that, you're you're extroverted, but you're not like you don't like people, <laughs> like meeting new people. As in, like you're not one to like go to a bar and then make friends with everyone there. Yeah, if it's That's like a, not, if it's like, like a big group of people and I yeah. know they're like friends of a friend or something, mm -hmm. then it's fine. But yeah, for sure, like it's if it's just like, random. You're extroverted, but not necessarily social i guess and mm. like super social or anything but you do enjoy the company of others and you really enjoy talking and spending time with people and mm -hmm. you know there's i know you get like cabin fever if you don't see friends after a while you know um i think to a certain extent not like I you don't, don't need to see them like every week or anything but i think you know if you go for a couple months without seeing him i feel like you would be like you yeah. know what i want to go I, I really want to go see somebody kind of thing yeah um and you like i feel like you're your battery chart like recharge like you mentioned before like you like to go meet up with friends to kind of get their opinions and stuff and that's kind of how you refresh mm. and so your way of charging batteries is talking to people mm. and seeing people versus mine is isolation and darkness <laughs> <laughs> isolation and darkness so that's i think that's what it is it's sometimes when we're having a bad day when we're just not feeling it gray's gray goes to stream that's why he did so many imp streams. Yeah. It's like when he's having a bad day and he just really needs kind of re refresher, he turns on stream. Versus me, it's I run away from it. Yeah. So I think that's what's so different about, um, I guess, yeah, how we deal with your that question is. Yeah, I think he'll turn on stream. I won't kind of thing. I think people. So. I've mentioned this before, but people's relationship to streaming is like, I really don't understand why people stream when they don't want to mm. or like um unless it's like they're making enough money or like it's like super dependent on their life mm. but if you get to that a size of that level i think it's different mm. there's a lot so i'm not talking about them i'm talking about people that don't make a living off this right it's and, like, yeah. and they probably want to one day in this really ambiguous goal that everybody has but no one's forcing them to right? no one's forcing yeah. them to do it but they they feel like they need to mm. and the community of those people not i don't know every community in the world is like it's fine yeah most, most if you're communities feeling are like really shit it's yeah. fine like don't do it like yeah. look after yourself like they're yeah. super supportive and mm. we don't and people just don't listen to them either you know yeah. but i do understand that like there's an obligation there's a schedule and um, mm -hmm. there's this like panic moment. It's like, if I don't stream today, 
they're gonna leave. And it's like as ridiculous as it sounds, it's actually it happens. <laughs> or yeah. like because with such a um, noticeable number, when like two people leave, that you notice it. Like mm-hmm. it's and um, you have your good days and bad days too. Like oh, I'm yeah. the strongest day of the week is here, and you of course right because you're seeing yeah. it every day. But I hope I I've just really made sure that my mindset's not that. Mm-hmm. Especially now that I have to stream by myself. I have to make I want to make sure that my rela- I have other problems with streaming or like my I have other problems. I have other problems like yeah. my, my body's failing, but no. My and which I mentioned earlier in this pod about my kind of like fuck it moment where I'm like I'm going to do it moment, mm-hmm. but um and it was like almost like I it like bro- it almost like broke down to that very internal moment where it was a very internal struggle that I was having. And it was really hard to explain. Um, I couldn't even explain to Blue. Um, and I couldn't. I probably can't even explain it to myself. But, so I have stuff like that. But when it comes to, like, I've never felt I don't want to go live. Because I think I stream more now that I'm by myself. Uh, more than I was before. With imp streams and stuff, too. So, yeah. It's just a relationship to streaming. And I, the thing that you mentioned 100% makes sense. Mm-hmm. And I had that with us when it was just us two all the time, for sure. Which, yeah. which is actually a short amount of time. Because it was, we used to do the whole solo and duo. And we've only done duo every day since. For a year. Yeah. Just for a year. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's pretty wild. Yeah. That's tiring as hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, now that Streaming it, every day together was so tiring. <laughs> it actually was. Yeah. Like, I, I realized. Think- I think this this is a lot better. It's having a few solos and few duos. I think it's a better, better relationship for sure. It for didn't sure. like make me not like you. It's such like like shallow shit like that. But yeah, like yeah. just in general, like it just like it. Because I mean, like us. we. I mean, like I mentioned earlier, it just we use a different part of like we use more brain power to kind of make yeah. sure that we're balancing this out. Yeah. So it's a lot tiring than just stringing by yourself. Yeah. So. It's true. Hmm. Just a re- really random thought I had. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that question. Um, Brenna asks. Um, Brenna. F- Bren asks. Bren Air. Hi, Brenna. Hey, Brenna. <laughs> um, for Gray, what song will you never forget the lyrics to? Uh, a lot <laughs> of songs, but I think in particular, probably Stacy's mom. Uh, Stacy's mom <laughs> is big. Uh. All Stars, Pretty Big by Smash Mouth. No, um, I would say um, something that's always kind of like stuck with me. It's probably one of like one firework song. Firework songs, yeah, for sure. But I think I'm trying to think like the when I read that question, the first thing that came to my head was Never Meant by American Football. And it was just because like it that was the lyrics to that song blew me away when i when i listened to it and i um i've bonded especially with brian from joy weather with that like we've had like nights where we would just be drinking to that song you know and like it's just like just thinking about that or like um it, it just kind of like repeats and it's not like i live that lyric or anything anymore but now that I'm 32 in in a very healthy relationship, but um, I, I hope I don't have. I, I don't, don't know. It's lack of forehead kisses. Yeah, seriously, I'm finding out new things, you, and sp- especially you have so much forehead space, so it's really weird that. I yeah, <laughs> well, I want you to give it a, any attention. It's like a fucking billboard over here. <laughs> Jesus. Um. Also, another one that really sticks with me uh, to this day is uh, all my friends playing. All my friends play in bar bands by the Wonder Years is another song that really, um, I don't know. It's just it's, it's just one of those songs that uh, really helped me out when my formula years uh, when I was moved. It was like right after high school, going into college, and I didn't have like that many f- like everything was new. Everyone went to America or Europe or everyone went home outside of Japan coming from an international school and I just felt really alone and that when the upsides dropped it was kind of like uh when the record the upsides dropped that was yeah and of course all I have to offer is my own confusion what an amazing album name by fireworks like that is like perfect for how I felt 
Um, so it was like, it's like what, it's like that moment everybody has with Morrissey and the Smiths, where it's like, Morrissey gets me. It's like, it was like, there's a bunch of bands that I felt that about with, but Fireworks and the one, Wonder Years, um, especially, were one of those like, yeah, they understand, man. They fucking get me. Damn it. <laughs> like, that's, that's, yeah. that's how I felt. But I'm sure there's a ton more that, mm-hmm. that I have. A lot, um, and like lyrically, like Blink doesn't really, is not something, it's more like, it's younger than that. So like, it was more about the music and like fun. And yeah, they had some like cool stuff and like the, like heavier stuff and deeper stuff on the self-titled. But um, lyrically, a lot of that, a lot of like Japanese bands too, Eligard and a lot of Eligard and lyrics. Uh, really okay, so the point is, Dre knows Jitterbug so Eligard. many songs by heart that he can probably have a whole podcast about it. I really like so, lyrics. Yeah. I really like lyrics and how delivery is and me- uh, melodic delivery. I yeah, don't. Yeah, isn't that interesting that you can probably remember so many lyrics, but I can't remember lyrics to a single song. Mm. But you can probably remember like the instrumentations and yeah. like it's just where where it's I, where we focus on songs. Because yeah. to me, I like I like the instrumentations of songs, not lyrics. So yeah. I like if you told me, hey, sing one song by heart, I can't. I can't even sing the Digimon song by heart. Mm. That's how bad I am with lyrics. Like that's for some reason, it's always the melody and the instrumentation that brings like that um uh, like not you know, hits me more than lyrics. So cuz you know, like on social media you see all those things it's like, oh, you know, if, is there a song that like if someone told you that uh you you can only live if you sing song if you sing one song perfectly. Yeah, I would fail every single one of them. So the thing is, <laughs> is like, yeah, it's it's really interesting because like I think a lot of like with the whole like lo-fi movement and like on the internet especially instrumentation, instrumental music, things that don't bother you from the main thing, which is like gaming or whatever you're doing, is I can't remember anything of that. It's just a whole, it's like a playlist. I've never used a playlist on Spotify. I had this conversation before. What do you mean? So I had this conversation with a friend very recently about Spotify, about how they moved from Spotify to Apple Music. Yeah. Because the playlists on Spotify weren't what, it wasn't like generating the playlists that he likes and he listens to like while he goes to work. And stuff. What generating playlists? So they have like they they'll like automate playlists for you or like they'll they'll be like um morning uh there'll be like playlists of like uh commuting and then things that people oh. like for commuting or like working out or like hard oh, rock okay, okay. or like yeah. emo never dies or something mm. like that. Like it's always showing up on my I've never listened to I've, I haven't either. I've actually. never listened to playlists. Yeah. And I've never made I've made playlists f- it I have a playlist that I just dump in songs that I'll forget mm. by like a single artist, so I just don't forget them. Yeah, so it's like a favorite kind of thing for for specific songs. But I've never used like I can't listen to a song that I don't know unless I'm like looking for new bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll look in the related section, but I don't listen to a playlist of a bunch of songs that I don't know. Yeah, no, I end up just skipping everything. <laughs> yeah, so like, so but yeah. a lot of people really just rely on like. Like I that, didn't know that. That would be a criteria for like what to use if the playlist is good. Oh, that's cool. And stuff I didn't like know that. that. Yeah. And so, um, and people listen to it differently. But I know playlists have. That's one of the biggest things. Like as an artist, like an indie artist, mm-hmm. there it's pretty common that people say like it's make or break once you release something on Spotify. If and you if get on, one, on, if you it's like that's something something radio playlist. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, Like yeah. that's really good. If yeah. they put you on that, or like labels will have their own radio, and then mm. there'll be like their playlist of the artists on their um on their label and stuff like that, yeah. and that's what artists now are trying to get on, and it's I just never use that. Mm. Like maybe I would now because that's like a really good way to like find out. Oh, I like this record label. I'll check out all these bands on this record label, and then I can just kind of like listen to it. But it's just I'm always like singling out exactly what I want and stuff like that. Um, another song that just came to my head, a lot of mineral songs. Um, yeah. Mineral songs uh, are, are always some... It's just the, the, I think it was like when I was like at my lowest point is when those like 
lyrics hit. There's still songs now, like some songs, some like rap songs that I was listening to recently that like that hit super hard. Uh, that was like, um, that I didn't think it would hit me, but it like hit me. Now that or like songs that didn't used to hit, but now they hit now. Um, cause like my favorite artist is Death Cab for Cutie, but I wouldn't, and I think their lyrics are like phenomenal, but they're not. I wouldn't. I don't know if I could like sing all the Death Cab songs. Mm. It's like different. Like I, I, cause I can't. What's the one song that makes you cry every single time? What's the song that makes you cry every single time? Or about to cry, I guess. Uh, yeah, that there's a uh, um, third time's a charm. I think. I think that's the name. I, I think that might I might have uh, fucked up the song name. It's called. Um, give me some one second. Um, I only ask because I'm guessing it's the lyrics that make you cry, right? A hundred percent. Wait, wait, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Not the music. I mean, the music too. Everything put together, but mainly the lyrics. Um. Because you know the one song that makes me cry every time? What? Is, um, hold on. I'm trying to find the title. I always I'm forget sorry. the title. You've Lost Your Charm by Fireworks on their record. All I Have to Lose, All I Have to Offer is My Own Confusion. Um, it's, and that's, that was take, that's, that's like a line from something, right? Um, but I don't know. That album title. Um, anyways. Might have been like Jack Kerouac or something. I don't know. But anyways, uh, yeah, You've Lost Your Charm is the one that fucking gets me every single time. Yeah, because the one song that makes me cry every time is called An End Once and For All by Clint Mansell and Sam Hulick. And it's the Mass Effect Mass Effect 3 soundtrack. Ah. <laughs> or it's from it's it's one of like the, the title songs for that. But but like that's because you played the game, right? The lyrics are the game. You're I not, mean that too, but if you just listen to that yeah. out of the blue, then no, it will still affect you. That song is phenomenal. No, but for you personally, you played the game. The game, the experience that you have no, with the yeah, game yeah, yeah. is yeah. the story. Of course, and yeah, the yeah. lyrics are the story. So, yeah. like for me, the lyrics are it's the, it, it's. I feel like that's like the same thing. Yeah, but for you, it's like a hundred hours. Where <laughs> I was like, mine's just like no, true, true, yeah. yeah. Is so. But yeah, there's yeah. The one that gets me is "You Lost Your Charm." Is that when I feel down, that song will fuck me up every single time. There's moments where you just caught me. I'm just listening. I'm like, ah, yeah. I, I, uh, I'm sad. I'm not. <laughs> I'm sad. sad. <laughs> so yeah, blue. Sorry if that was a really long answer, but uh, blue. Say you wake up one morning, and realize you're in a scary movie. What horror villain do you think you have the best shot at surviving against and make it to the end? A good question. What are some horror movies we've seen? Strangers. Uh, I'm sorry. I've I'm never seen Strangers. Strangers. Uh, I've never seen Strangers. I'm, I'm just. Oh my God. Can you just let my fucked up brain do its thing where okay. I just reiterate sorry. stuff? Sorry. Yes. Thank you. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. So Strangers. I've never seen Strangers. <laughs> just kidding. Um, <laughs> Jason Voorhees. Friday the 13th. I've never seen that either. Uh, Freddy Krueger. I've never seen that Next. either. Sadako. That's true. Juwon. Um, um, Michael Myers. To make it to, no, I've never seen it either. A- any zombie from any movie? Any of those movies? Yeah, I'm trying to think. 28 Days um, Later. Oh, no. 28 Days Later. I would probably be the first person to die. 28 Days Later zombies are fucked up. Um, no, I, I, <laughs> what horror villain do you think will have the best shot at surviving against and make it to the end of the movie? What? <laughs> What? Uh, uh, okay. I was gonna say maybe get out because he's just a bunch of white people. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's 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 probably the best. That you probably had the best shot. Oh shit! <laughs> Actually, yeah. 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 You probably probably of of yeah, of yeah. all monsters, I think is that is white that, people. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> I think, oh my god! I think oh that, my might, god, that caught me off guard. I, I think that might be you might have a good shot because I was thinking of like movies where it's like real killers and stuff like that. Like, yeah. what's that one movie with the psychopath? Like the, the most famous psychopath that's ever portrayed in movies that's supposed to be, um, like you would never survive that guy. What was that movie that we saw together? It's uh, and it, it that that 
what a, the villain in that is supposed to be one of the best portrayed psychopaths. Oh yeah, yeah. What was it called? I can't believe that the I name. I forgot what the name was, the name of the movie. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah, we yeah. would not survive that. Yeah, no. We would not survive that guy. Terminator. It's not a horror movie, but anything with a villain, I'm thinking right now. Um, what's another one? Have you seen? We don't really watch horror movies together, huh? Mm. Because you would, we wouldn't be able to survive anything that's like you know, like Texas Chains- Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like insane villains. Yeah, where it's like just like monsters, like impossible, right? Like Jeepers Creepers, like that dude, he would fuck you up. Anything slow, anything slow, and like- oh, I know, I could probably survive. What was it, Cabin in the Woods? Because I wouldn't go in the first place. <laughs> Cabin in the woods. I wouldn't go in the first place. So You could say that for literally everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So all of it. I wouldn't go in the first place. E- okay. The answer is every single movie. Because, because I wouldn't Because she go. wouldn't go to it. <clears throat> mm-hmm. She wouldn't go to the cabin. She wouldn't go to the I mean, hotel. Like, you know, she wouldn't yeah, go to the... Yeah, like, what was it? The one movie, Hostel? I wouldn't go to the middle of nowhere and give someone my passport. That's dumb. So I, I could survive off that, too. Um, Saw wouldn't happen because I've never... I don't think I've ever done anything that was, like, secretive or, like, that that guy would, like, target me for anything. So... Oh, do you think you could get through the Saw traps? You're good at... You're... Okay, except for, like, Saw... what That one Saw where, like, it was, like, five people in a room. Like, every single thing... I was watching that movie going, there was one trap in one of the Saw movies. It was like five people, right? And it was like, er, 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 and like fire, it was like fire was going to come out. And there's little holes in the wall, right? And there's one for each person or there was like only four and there's five people. But it's just a long tube and they have to find keys. Everybody could have just fit in one and stuff like that where it was like, there's so many loopholes and yeah. stuff like that. But besides that, do you think you could survive... Um, besides from stupid shit like that, do you think you could survive like a saw trap? No. Like a jigsaw? Like No. Like if I was sleeping like this and there's a, there's a key inside every tummy, get the key or no. the bear trap or will. No. And then I wake up like, <gasps> bam! No. <laughs> no, no one could get through that. It's like the most fucked up scenario. No. Or- I'm or not this... gonna cut into my eye to get a key behind my oh, yeah, that's eye socket. That's no, I would rather just die. You just you would just rather die. Yeah. So no. What's another any villains? I mean, does it count that Slenderman might be an option because I find him kinda hot? Whoa. Ew. Okay, yeah. Maybe not. You wouldn't survive that. That's yeah, not, I'd that's be not okay. Surviving. Yeah, yeah I mean, you're just accepting death. I would just be accepting. Yeah. Okay, so get uh, out is the answer. Yeah, get out might be the answer. All right, Joran asks, uh, "What was the most challenging problem obstacle you encountered with past month that you had to deal with?" Everything I talked about, I would say yeah. in this podcast, is for me the most cha- challenging obstacle that I'm trying to like overcome. How about you? I mean, I kind of mentioned it too, where I was. Um, Having to deal with uh, designing things that I don't necessarily would wear myself. I know one sleep schedule for you because you you don't oh, yeah. s- you you are like up till super late. Sometimes, 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 yeah. not all the time, but yeah, my sleep schedule is pretty fucked. Yeah. yeah, I think I was at the PC like watching a stream, and you're like, "Hey, great, I'm going to go to the supermarket. You want to go?" And I was like, "Dude, it's like twelve. And she's like, "Oh yeah, I'm going to be up all night." And I'm like, okay. Yeah. So. <clears throat> so you have days like that. But it's kind of yeah. like, I thought it was kind of cool because like you and your team were all like, all right, let's get this done. Let's go. And then yeah. you guys were like all together. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just you yeah, yeah. soloing it. Like you guys were like. We're all together trying to get things done. So yeah. That's cool. It's like a montage. Mm. What is a song that best, thank you for that question, John. And last question is by Regular. What song, what's a song that best sums up your feelings lately? Um, let's see. Um, that's a good question. Uh, that's a very different type of question than Bren's uh, question. Um, something that... You know? It would, it, it would probably... I think I, I listen to a lot of more, like, 
like Japanese songs recently, and there's this one song. I know it doesn't really mean it's probably an English song that's probably best for this answer. But there's a song called Walk by uh, a rapper named Kadoro. And um, Kadoro is like this guy that came up from um, Miyazaki. And uh, he's a freestyle rapper. And um, he he had like nothing. He was super poor, like living off nothing. And then like he did a lot of this uh, freestyle freestyle rap. And that kind of became big in Japan. And he just started winning all these tournaments. And now he's like making big money now doing these like major type of songs and um he's like rich now living living a good life and it's really cool to see that and um he has a song on his most recent record that just dropped uh i think this month um and it's called walk and the song is about how no matter you know it's very like very easily summed up it's just like no matter what happens let's just keep walking you know just keep going forward in a very way more poetic, better way than that. But um, I really like that song. I've been listening to that song a lot. Um, what what else have I been listening to? Um, but so, and and it sums up my feelings. It sums <laughs> up my feelings for sure. How I feel about it, and kind of like it's been kind of like I have to push myself to be positive. Um, on a lot of things, and uh, it's it's been helping. It's been helping. Or I, I always turn to stuff like that. And again, it's the lyrics. How about you? Uh, mine's probably Concerto for Strings in G Major by Vivaldi. Just listen to it. You'll get it. No, you, you got to explain <laughs> no, it. I mean, That's so pretentious. <laughs> no, it's just... it's. It's like the song is kind of a roller coaster, and I feel like that's kind of what I go through a lot. Is like sometimes there's like really quiet moments. I'm I'm very, you know, I, I'm going through like a really steady time, and then all of a sudden something happens, and I'm just like, yeah, it's like really dramatic, and I'm trying to get things done, and it's like yeah. Mm. So it's like this like roller coaster, and I think it really accurately kind of depicts the quiet times and the loud times I have in my head. So yeah, yeah. A song that doesn't, I don't know if it sums up my feelings, but helps my feelings mm. <laughs> recently is uh, is a song called An Island by Owen. It's a, it's a kind of a th- throwback now. It was on an album called King of Wise. Um, actually, the, the singer of American Football has a solo project called Owen. It's an acoustic one. And uh, An Island is one that I listen to a lot to just kind of calm down and just like kind of get lost. That song gets me lost in a good way, in a very, very good way. So probably, yeah, those two songs. Thank you guys for another Thank you guys. fantastic month. Either, you know, everyone's got their thing going on, so I don't know if you guys have been on the stream or been just checking this podcast out or I haven't been checking out any of our YouTube stuff that's been going up. But we really, really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. And I just hope we make it another month because – if we make it to the next episode of the So So, that means we survived another month on this place called the internet. And that's hard. That is hard. So, everybody, good luck. You guys be good. Let's- and we'll see you next time. And hopefully, you guys will be with us. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye bye.